company. I made the call. I got my medical records. I sent in my medical records. I had a video consultation with the clinician. The next day, I had a video call with the doctor. Two days later, I had 30 grams of medical marijuana at my door, tracked by Royal Mail and signed for upon delivery. Wow. So it actually wasn't that difficult. It wasn't that difficult. But you have to pay for it. That's uh, you have to pay for it. Now, for a couple of my friends have applied for for different, like, neuropathy and another guy for, like, eye pain and stuff. And they've both been refused it. What's because it? they didn't go to the doctor enough. What's, for, what's it cost you, John? It cost... The last one, 30 grams the last time for me was £225. My goodness. So it adds That's up. quite expensive. But if you pay, if you buy black market, that could be 28 grams at £10 a gram. Mm. But what that you're saying is basically we've created this system where it's legal to have, you know, cannabis, to use cannabis for medicinal reasons, but it's so hard to get on the NHS that really that luxury is only being afforded to people who can afford it. Absolutely, yeah. Right, absolutely. Okay. I, think, I think the NHS need to relook at, relook at it and say to themselves, well, obviously, if, if Britain is the biggest exporter of medical cannabis going out of the country. My brother, for example, as an investment in a medical grow in Africa, mm. he's invested £10,000 of his own money into this with, with promise of a big return. But then again, you know yourself, investments and returns? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? That's, that's been a risky strategy to me, John. So, yeah, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Lovely to speak to you, John. Grateful for your call. Thank you. That was John, first time calling in County MR. When it comes to making it easier for people to access it if they've got a medical reason. I mean, I, I mean, what's the argument against that? It's still too difficult to access. And we know the science is there, the evidence is there, the case studies like John is there. For a lot of people, it helps, and it helps in a way that other drugs don't. And I think when it comes to our approach to the medicinal cannabis in this country, it's prehistoric almost. We're so behind the curve on the fact that something, yes, that can be an illegal drug that does awful damage, like to Mark, poor Marley's son, can at the same time for other people be life-changing. We're getting there when it comes to medicine. We're not there yet. Phil's another first-time caller in Kent. Hi, Phil. Hi, how are you? I'm OK, are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. I just was listening to your cannabis debate there. Um, I basically, I'm 52, and two two years ago I was diagnosed with ASD and ADHD um, with no learning problems um, mm. with that. And I basically what's called I've got what's called a cannabis card. And what's, what that what's does? A cannabis? Go on. Um, you can Google it all up, it's all there. Um, it's basically a card, and it's a registered scheme. So if you've got, like, ADHD, but you have to sort of prove that you smoke dope all your life to your doctor, right. done through the doctor. And what it basically means, it means I've got a card which is registered, and it's all linked to the police. It's registered scheme through them. And what happens is, obviously, if you've got, six ounces all back wrapped up, you're going to get arrested, aren't you? Hmm. But if you've just got a bit on you, and like, I'm coming from my mate's house, I don't actually get nicked and arrested like I would, would have done Because you're ago, using it as a medicine? It. Yeah. So it's a way basically. of proving that you're you're legally able to use and carry what you're doing? Yeah, definitely. And, I, and I've told my ADHD specialist that during the sort of undiagnosed years growing up, hmm. cannabis was my best friend. That got me active. Was it? Um, what does it yeah, do for definitely. you, Phil? What does it do for you? Who, me? Oh, yeah. with ADHD and... It, well, to be honest, it gets me active, makes me very calm. Um, I, I sort of grew up in the acid house era, a sort of acid braves. So I sort of went went to them parties, and I wasn't really a drinker. I just went for the, for the party drugs. Right. The sort of... All these years later, now I've been diagnosed with ADHD, I can understand why everything. It's just, I just think it's really bad that. So when, when are, you you know when you use yeah. it, how does yeah. it how does it affect you? Um, it helps me coordination, hmm. sort of with, with my thinking. Obviously, with ADHD, I've, I've got hyperactivity as well. Mm -hmm. It sort of slows that down to a degree. Um, just, just leaves me more calm and collected really and when you don't use it or when you if you can't use it what would you be like um much worse well 
Well, yeah, because I'm prescribed amphetamine um, as well for my ADHD. Okay. Um, which is quite ironic, really, because I've been to court for actually having that in my younger days. <laughs> oh, really? Um, so you went to yeah, court for doing it illegally, and now you're using it as yeah. medicine, legally? Yeah. I said to my doctor when I first found out about the meds, I, 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 you know, I mean, it was twisting my brain a bit. I thought, all right, okay. You, but they did change my life, though. Where are you, meds. Phil, given... I mean, you've got a lock spear as all of this. What, where are you on this question of... Should it be legalised for everyone? Should it be decriminalised for everyone? Yeah, it should be. At the end of the day, I could never understand why an 18-year-old is allowed to go down the off-licence, buy enough vodka, that he can go home and just yeah. poison himself, really, put himself in a coma and die, and you couldn't do that with dope. But I guess, I guess the response to that is, if alcohol was created today, I suspect it would be illegal. So there's an argument that alcohol should be illegal. That doesn't necessarily mean that cannabis shouldn't be, does it? Oh, no, I can see, see the point. I, th I think one day it will be legal. I agree. I, I don't think it'll be that I, far off, to be honest with you, because we're, again, well behind the curve internationally on this, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. We're light years behind. We're way like... behind. We just got this sort of ridiculous ideology. Our politicians just think if they actually take a pragmatic, scientific, sensible, evidence-based approach to drugs, they'll be seen as sort of soft, wet, liberal snowflakes who are just bowing to some sort of woke agenda. I mean, we could, let's have a debate about cannabis. Fine, there will be people like Marley who say, no, it does great harm. There'll be others that say, like, Phil, actually, it does a lot of good. That's the debate we need to have. It needs to be about the evidence. It needs to be about the science, doesn't it? It needs to be about the reality. What is this drug? How many people benefit from it? What are the risks? How many people are worse off after taking it? That's what should be deciding it. Not just newspapers and politicians fearing what the headlines will be if they do that. The whole debate about drugs in this country right now, today, is just driven by ideology, stereotype and outdated ideas about drugs and what they are. That's got to change, hasn't it? Phil, it's a great call. Glad to hear it's working for you. That's Phil, first-time caller in Kent. Time now, 12.48.